Hey everyone, today we're talking Switch Pro again because yesterday, thanks to Takahashi Machizuki, who literally nailed everything about the Switch Lite before it was announced and then released, we have what seems like some concrete details about the Switch Pro and the fact that it's coming this year. But there's a lot of misinformation out there and a lot of weird misconceptions I want to address about this system. And no, folks, the Switch Pro is not a next-gen Switch. So anyone expecting it to be that uh, will be sorely disappointed. But if you are looking at this to be a PlayStation 4 Pro or, you know, the PlayStation 4 Pro in terms of in comparison to a PlayStation 4, or if you're looking at this to be a new 3DS in comparison to the 3DS, I actually have some really good news for you. So let's actually dive into this by first addressing what was announced and then what the concerns are, and then how uh, those concerns can be factually addressed with given information that we have on the internet. All right, but before we get into it, I gotta remind you, we are giving away a copy of Monster Hunter Rise and two $20 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox gift cards. Uh, so three total winners this month. To enter, head down to the description or the pinned comment. All right, let's actually get right into the hard information. So this is what we learned yesterday. The Switch Pro uses a rigid OLED panel at 720p and is 7 inches, which essentially gets rid of the bezel on the current switch. So if you look at the current switch and you see the bezel on it, imagine that that bezel is also screen real estate and that's the sizing we're talking about. Uh, it does have 4K output to the TV while docked, whatever that dock ends up being. Same dock, new dock, I have no idea. Uh, there's going to be 1 million units produced per month starting in June. So uh, that's a thing. It's also going to release this year. Also, other industry insiders and news reporters are noting that there are shitloads. Yes, folks, that's the exact language. Shitloads of developers and dev studios that have dev units of the Switch Pro right now. Uh, and you can expect a lot more leaks about these dev units in the coming months just due to how many people are currently developing for it. And yes, it is notable that they would not have dev units if there was not a, a, an actual difference under the hood. So if you we were just talking about a new a new 7-inch 720p OLED panel, there's no reason for developers to actually have dev units if what was under the hood was exactly the same. So yes, folks, there is clearly new chip technology under the hood for them to even need dev units of this platform. All right, so I figured the best way to address uh, what this all actually means is to discuss the misconstrued, misconstrued presumptions made about this that is leading people to be somewhat disappointed. So first concern I see, this is the biggest one always brought up, 720p screen again. <laughs> Nintendo is so behind. That's a 15-year-old technology. 1080p should have been at the bare minimum. What an embarrassment. Hell, it's got a worse DPI than the original Switch. All right, well, let's talk about this. So, while 720p may actually be disappointing on the surface, a lower resolution also means the internal parts can be used for more actual gameplay, especially the GPU. A resolution increase means more of a likely cutback GPU in handheld mode because it would need to be dedicated to simply outputting a 1080p image so that GPU can actually produce more visually impressive stuff on screen instead of focusing on resolution. You'll know this if you're on PC and you change the resolution. Suddenly your frame rates and uh, graphical settings can get cranked the lower your resolution is. Uh, also, consider this. A vast majority of the major games on Switch don't even run at a consistent native 720p, including offerings from Nintendo. Bumping the resolution to 1080p isn't a magic wand fix to this issue. What's more important is getting games on Switch currently and in the future to all run at a native 720p without needing to use adaptive resolution. This will lead to a crisper image on the Switch Pro than the original Switch, just by virtue that the current games will be able to consistently run at higher resolutions due to having beefier hardware. Uh, to give you an example, Ori in the Blind Forest and the, uh, in the Ori games, some people note that it always looks better on uh, PC at 1080p or whatever. Well, of course, 1080p, it's going to look a little bit better. But the Switch version, they say, always looks significantly worse. And that's because major parts of that game, especially in the background, are not rendering at 720p. Some parts of it are rendering as low as 240p. Uh, there are several games running at 540 and 480 consistently on Switch. 
only hitting 720p maybe in like a still image moment when you're staring at the ceiling or something so yeah it's a big deal to get games running at native 720p that is far more important than trying to run at a native 1080 trying to take docked performance of switch and make it handled is not the best way to go heck most games docked on switch don't even hit 1080 so let's just be honest here What's more important is hitting a native 720p resolution than it is worrying about trying to suddenly go well beyond that and almost next-gen this platform to hit 1080. All right. Beyond that, the screen will actually have more true-to-life blacks and richer colors due to the OLED technology, which is significantly better than LCD. Uh, the OLED also typically has a much higher response rate than LCD, meaning gameplay should feel a smidge tighter as well. Uh, what's also lost in 1080p versus 720 isn't even about the GPU itself, which in theory could use DLSS to take any resolution 540p or better and make it look great at 1080. It's that the screen itself would require more power draw at that resolution. Lower resolution, less power draw, better battery life. DPI concerns. So one concern I see repeated by some is that the Switch's screen is the same resolution, uh, but is 0.8 of an inch bigger. It means the DPI will be worse, which essentially means the same resolution, bigger screen, means pixels are bigger and thus jaggies are going to be worse. Admittedly, this is actually technically true, but the technology has existed for a while that can smooth this out, and that is easier to run than simply doing a resolution bump. Anti-aliasing is a thing. And there are multiple techniques to do it. The Switch system technically is already capable of running anti-aliasing. The problem is often that it leads to a hit on the frame rate, so the Switch's current CPU is simply not adequate to maintain solid frames while running any form of anti-aliasing. So AA is not simply something that really anyone uses on Switch. However, if Switch Pro does have a newer CPU, which they don't even have to go to the top end of the ARM structure to fit something in the current price budget, it is possible that AA starts to become a thing on this system. However, until it is, you know, likely it's going to technically be true. So it's going to be up to each developer on whether they want to use that or not. They may opt to use that performance again to push visuals of their game while maintaining a nice frame rate. So in the end, this is going to be a concern, though likely not one most people are going to even notice as being worse than the original system. You win some, you lose some. 1080p screen obviously is better, but then you make sacrifices elsewhere and there's pretty much nothing that's going to run at native 1080 anyways. But Nate, the cheapest smartphones on the market, they use 1080p screens. What gives? So the cheapest smartphones on the market, some that are cheaper than the Switch itself, also can't run Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, or The Witcher 3. They can barely handle basic web tasks, and the UI is super laggy. If you want to argue the mid-range and few top-end also use 1080p, I'll buy that, but they also are much more expensive than the Switch, and again, not targeted specifically for gaming. The top-end aka well, some iPhones or whatever, do use 1080p at times to save on battery life, even though many are switching to 4K just to say they have it. These phones are also, there are my people, really expensive in comparison. Okay, so let's set aside handheld. After all, we need to address that 4K claim. No way this thing compares to Series X and PlayStation 5. Hell, set that aside. No way it does 4K docked, even with DLSS. The battery would not be able to handle such a chip, or the device would simply just be too hot. First off, no, it's not going to be a PlayStation 5 or Series X. Duh. Like, the technology doesn't even exist to take those chips and put them in a mobile format. It's just not possible. So, let's set aside those comparisons. However, let's actually talk about the 4K. So, first off, yes, the only conceivable way the Switch has games display at 4K when docked is because of deep learning super sampling, aka DLSS. In layman's terms, it's just a technology that can re-render a lower resolution image at a higher quality with minimal loss, aka the switch may output a similar 1080p native when docked, but would look image quality wise really, really close to native 4K. It also lets higher frame rates occur. This is because the technology uses tensor cores, which are not the same cores the GPU uses to actually build out your game. They are a separate core that are specifically dedicated, at least in the Switch's case, to doing just this. So let's talk about the packages of the GPU that has tensor cores, the ones that currently exist. The first GPU to have it was NVIDIA's Volta line, which came out in 2017. Essentially, the successor to what is inside the Switch. If we ignore that it's sort of a half step between Ma Maxwell and Pascal that existed as well in between, technically this chip already exists in the actual Tegra line, and it's called the Xavier chip. 
that Xavier actually came out in March of 2019 and has 7 billion transistors, 8 custom AMR V8 cores, a Volta GPU with 512 CUDA cores, in addition to open source tensor processing units, which helps the system encode and decode 8K Ultra HD. That's right. Like, 8K Ultra HD is decoded with tensor cores. It's pretty crazy. There are 10 watt, 15 watt, and 30 watt settings, and it uses a 12 nanometer FinFET process, and the die size is around 350 millimeters squared. However, they could have a die shrink since then. That's just what it was at launch. We don't know a lot of information about this chip since then because it's just been thrown in smart cars and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> Here's numbers that you might understand. The T-flop performance of that card can hit about 1.6. Uh, the chip is mostly used in smart cars. The lowest RAM used with the Xavier chip is 8 gigabytes with an upper limit of 16. The current Tegra X1 is built on 118 millimeters uh, pro uh, squared is the size of the die. So yes, the other chip is bigger. Uh, but again, die shrinks could be in there and we aren't done yet. That above chip, uh, which would be pretty cool, is technically built specifically for cars they would need to redesign it a bit for switch uh nvidia also has an orion or orin in the works for the tegra line which is an eight nanometer or i think seven nanometer actually uh and a, is a much smaller die size as for heat none of these chips go above 65 watts which is way too much for portable uh but that's for big boy chips in a car that has way better cooling on the mobile side as it noted there's 10 watt variants and that's exactly what the tegra x1 runs at in handheld mode where it beefs up the wattage in docked. This means that somewhere between a Xavier and Orion, it's reasonable to think a custom chip that runs at 10 to 15 watts can easily be made for Switch with some customized work, similar to how the PlayStation uh, 5 and Xbox Series X are using modern Ryzen slash 6000 series chips that are cut way back to fit the requirements, heat, and price point of the given systems. In other words, absolutely mobile chips exist from NVIDIA to get tensor cores into the package at a pretty modest watt usage and price point for Nintendo. Can't they just use an eGPU then in the dock? Screw that. Let's just go all out. Well, absolutely. Though there are bus limits on Thunderbolt style line that would need to be used to hit a native 4K but that would be stupidly expensive. Even running a 3090 in this form with a laptop has proven troublesome. It's also doubtful Nintendo is going to include an optional GPU package in a dock some people won't even use. Though Nintendo does have a patent for a supplemental computing device, so we can't ignore it's possible, but it seems unlikely when they have Tegra packages that already have what they need to run DLSS on the chip itself. So, what can we actually expect? Seriously, folks, like what can we expect? Simply put, an OLED 720p screen at 7 inches is very specific and seems like a lock. 4K is definitely doable if they want to use deep learning super sampling. Uh, so what people really want to know, though, is what's that power increase? Minimally, we're probably going to see RAM doubling from 4 gigs to 8. Though if Nintendo is being really skimpy about it, maybe it's 6. Either way, that's still a full 2 gigabytes more than the current Switch. Also, they're going to use a newer chip if they want to even dream of using deep learning super sampling to get 4K. As such, we are looking at a performance increase across the board, uh, likely closer to 1.4 to 1.5 teraflops, and certainly more cores, or at least faster C CPU cores, or both. A jump from 4 to 6 cores, or even 8, is not impossible. Realistically, this makes it very similar to the jump in performance from, say, a PlayStation 4 Pro to from the PlayStation 4, or like the new 3DS to 3DS. So essentially what we saw in the jumps in those platforms is pretty similar to what we're talking about here. However, on Switch, this may actually feel noticeably better in comparison to what the other platforms pulled off, simply because existing games can likely hit native resolutions, which is going to create an overall quality of life improvement. Uh, yeah, so gamers, um, it's not quite a next-gen leap, but it's going to feel very nice. Switch Pro is likely going to be priced, just based on current pricing of existing chips and parts, around $299 again, maybe $349 tops. This also likely means the OG Switch will see its first $50 price cut, uh, similar to what occurred with the new 3DS at launch, and obviously the Switch Lite would drop another 50 bucks as well. So these are just my speculation at the end on the pricing, but I looked up the chip prices. It looks like the pricing is going to fall somewhere in there. So that's it. That's what we can expect. Hopefully this all made sense to you. If it didn't, let me know if you have further questions about the Switch Pro down in the comments below. I'm Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.